It's the perfect storm of poop. It's the perfect poop storm. I wish you guys could smell, but you can't. It's deeper over there. So this is one of those situations of take care of it now and take five minutes or take care of it tomorrow and it'll take five hours. This isn't gonna take five hours, but it's been, uh, I've been putting it off. I should have pulled material out of here and added more material and I didn't. And then when the storm came through, when we had the ice, it broke a couple of the zip ties so it pulled the tarp back a little bit. And then I didn't address it then. I should have put another tarp over it. But I said, well, we're gonna have to move this pin anyways because the muck is just too thick. We're not gonna be able to lift this pin up because I've just kept adding wood chips and material and wood chips and more material uh, in there. So it's about 12 inches on the sides. And the manpower we have, we're not gonna be able to just pull that up. So I'm gonna unscrew the panels and then relocate the pin and then put the pin back together on a different footprint. And then this will just sit here um, and it'll grow in the next six months or so. This thing will just be grass that's way greener and twice as big as all the other grass around it. So that's where I'm at. Had I just put some zip ties on here, I wouldn't have this soupy, poopy mess. And I didn't. Had I just come out and spent five minutes putting zip ties on here, I would have prevented this. So what I'm gonna do is take this apart. I've got chicken wire around here from when these chickens were little hens. They were little tiny chicks, so they couldn't get out. So I'm gonna cut the corners where the chicken wire goes around because it's all zip tied up real well. So each panel will have, zip, have its chicken wire on there. I'll just cut it in the corners. I will pull these brackets. I've already started and then I thought, well, I should probably video this. So I'll undo these panels, move them. That chicken's going to die, that rooster. I'm gonna strangle that thing. Um, so then we'll just put this someplace else and put it all back together. And uh, that's what's about to happen. Poop. It's always poop. Everything out here is covered in poop. I always pick up any of the uh, baling twine, zip ties, any of that shit. Keeps uh, animals from eating it, getting caught in a mower. Um, just why leave it, you know? wired in a little extra. <laughs> There are earthworms everywhere here. I don't know if you guys can see them. There's little worms all over the place. Hello, hello. Nothing to see here, away with you. Move along, move along. We had uh, tarps, we used to just put a pole with a piece of mat on top of them and it would kind of circus tint it to, to kind of shed the rain but it would always kind of pool in the corners and sag and be a problem so chef josh uh came up with this 
and it's just a two by six across with a piece it rests on and then this piece is bolted and comes down and then we just wire these on with metal wire and it kind of makes a a, pit, a pitch of a tent like these you see here these all need replaced about once a year we replace these tarps and i guess uh that day is today but a lot of you guys have asked how we did those with the tarps and this is what we did super uh super simple but man it works so well and then the corners he just kind of rounded them on the corners to keep them from punching through the tarps as bad and it uh it's it's worked well we've gone from having to replace the tarps two three times a year to uh just once a year now Of all the stuff I have up here, I don't have a screw bit, which I've put these in with. Um, I use these one by sixes for purchase. This one's actually a two by four. And I just put them in there and then I just put a screw halfway through and it just keeps them from sliding in and out. They don't uh, flex, they don't warp too bad. Um, and the chickens, uh, they can get up high under the tarp and totally out of the weather. So if you come out at night, you won't actually even see a chicken. It's way up in the top um, and it just works well. It's uh, just this mess here because I didn't spend a few minutes earlier to uh, prevent it. This is what I needed right here. It seems like I use this someplace every day. back into the poop soup. And there I was. Chicken almost died. This coop actually, as bad as they look right now, this coop is the uh, best egg producer group that we have. And, uh, Tomorrow, they will look completely different. They'll look like uh, show birds tomorrow almost. They'll be totally cleaned out. These birds over here, I moved all these hay bales. We build the hay bales up during the cold uh, weeks. So it just gives them more wind block and uh, thermal barrier. And then over time, the hay just kind of um, rots itself away and starts to fall over. So I moved them and there's earthworms down here and that's what these birds are just chomping down on. They're going nuts over all these worms that are in here. So because this is so deep and heavy and kind of embedded into this chicken wire here, I can't move these panels. They're just, they're just too heavy. So I'm just gonna cut this chicken wire here down the corners and then these panels will just kind of fall over and then I'll move them to where I want them to be. I think that's the plan. We'll see. I have been trying so hard not to get that mud all over me and I have failed. Okay, I think I got it. These are the tartar dog kennels that I've told you guys about. And those ones over there look like them, but they are not, they are very different. The tartar has thicker gauge wire 
has better hinges. The doors are a little wider and heavier. Um, everything about them is better. These ones were sold as chicken coops and I bought them because they have a pitched roof already so you don't have to put a uh, reinforcement bar across them. But the sizing is different. The poles are smaller, the wire is thinner, the coating is not as good. The same uh, nest box we have in that one uh, doesn't fit here. So there's, there's a lot of issues. Um, and I think I paid more for the chicken version. The roof is nice, but I don't know. I don't know if I would buy those ones again. Um, the tartar is just a, a better quality uh, piece. You can see how thick this is here. It's about 12 inches to the ground. You got a fly on your nose? You got mud on your nose. Not quite, not quite warm enough for flies yet, but another couple weeks we'll be wishing it was winter again so the flies would be gone. I'm gonna put this chicken pen inside here so that we can turn them out and let them run and kind of keep them separated. Um, the new puppy, he's done well. I haven't seen him kill or grab a bird yet, but left alone, uh, you could easily come back and have every chicken dead that he has access to. So rather than keep him locked up, I want him out to do his job and we will keep the chickens over there. This set anyways. They're scared to death, like a hawk's coming down on them. <laughs> Hello, chicken. Be free. Man, I've got... I've got like a mud clod in my boot that I keep stepping on. You know it's poop. It's always poop. All right, so that's where it's going to, that's where it's gonna sit. We gotta square it up a little better than we have it, but you get the idea. The wire I use is this electric fence wire. And you don't have to buy a quarter mile of it. You can buy a half mile, you can buy um, a lot less, it's 17 gauge. And I'm gonna wire these pieces of wood into place here to make the brace that supports the tarp to put over the coop here. Now the tarps we get in a two-pack, they come from uh, Sam's Club or Costco. We've been using them for over a decade. We've used a lot of other tarps, we've tried all kinds of stuff. The best deal you will get is that two-pack at Costco and Sam's Club. So when you see it, just buy you a couple packages of it, keep it on hand if you're a prepper, if you're a homestead or whatever always have those things every single time we go to sam's club whether i need them or not i buy a two pack of these things and i have them stacked up so you get about a year out of them we take them and just kind of throw them away you could totally use them after a year um, for uh, something else other places but just that's the best deal we found i've shopped everything we've looked for we've been doing this for over 15 years now in this same manner and this works perfect we tried all kinds of um purpose-built chicken coops and all kinds of stuff they're not the prettiest but nothing works better than these dog runs these are the cheapies that we bought originally and then the tartars and then the actual chicken built ones um, and just putting the tarp over the top takes care of any problem we've ever had
So your limiting factor, the important edge is the front edge because that's where your door is. So this door opens inward. So it's not too big of a deal, but I don't want this covering the door any more than I have to. So I'm gonna lock it to the front edge here, which I've done in a few places. And I'm gonna pull it totally tight on the back. And then I'm gonna kind of bring the sides down and then I'm gonna work the corners kind of like a Christmas package. The tighter you make this, the better you'll be. And you can even, uh, you can set some and then kind of come to the middle one and pull the middle tighter and then cut those if you need to kind of walk it into place if you're trying to do it by yourself. And a, an 11 inch or a 12 inch zip tie is best. You can do it with shorter ones, but it's a lot easier to have this tail to grab onto to ratchet and crank these things down. Um, and if you don't have long ones, you can take two and make kind of a figure eight. Just make a loop through there and then take the loop to the next bar with the smaller zip tie if you have to. Also to keep tension on this thing, when I put these zip ties in, I'm not putting them straight down. This first one is straight down. But this one, I'm putting it down and to the left, and this one down and to the right. It just puts more tension. The tighter you have this, the less it can blow around. The less it blows around, the less abrasion you'll get uh, rubs, rub throughs on it. Also, the tighter it is, um, the less chance you have of water pooling. Where water pools, it, uh, it, it's a lot of weight. And what has happened here on this old one, you can see, is the water pulled and it got enough weight that it actually bent that panel. And if you can see up there, it's full of water and uh, pine needles. That just happened yesterday. It wasn't like that yesterday morning. So again, having not changed the tarps out earlier, um, now I've got a bend here. So I'm gonna have to put a, a, a brace in there, push that uh, main beam, that main pole back into place and then put a new tarp on that. Uh, that little chicken house there. Okay, so there it is. If you uh, if you took your time and you're like a, a puzzle guy or a crossword guy, I'm sure you could figure out how to tension this tight and not have it lower in one point than the other. But I'm after function. I'm not worried about that. Um, zip ties are cheap. You could cut them off and you know walk the others into place a little bit better, I guess. But this gets this done. And I'll open this up, put the feeders and the waters in here. These chickens will come find this. And uh, in the middle of the night, as soon as the next couple hours, they will roost and I will close the door and this will be uh, their new uh, pen in here. And then um, they can get in and out of here. Eventually we'll put some chicken wire up on this front piece here where these bigger holes are. And for the most part, they will stay in here unless till we open the gate. So there it is. I'll show you once it's all done. Okay, there it is. Okay, so as the day goes on, they'll start looking for a place to roost. They were just a bunch of them in here. Um, and I, when I brought this carpet in here, they kind of freaked out and ran out. But it's this AstroTurf uh, carpet stuff. And that's what the eggs rolled down slowly. And when I opened this up to put it uh, in there, I was just rinsing it out. Um, two more chickens had laid two more eggs. So I got two more eggs out of the deal. And they are now moved and they're in this uh, run here where we'll be able to keep track of them a little better. And here's the tools I used. I just used a DeWalt driver with a uh, 9, I think it's a 916, just to take that uh, the bolts apart and put them back together. I had one of the brackets was a little blunt, so I used a piece of channel lock, um, a channel lock and a vice grip, and then uh, this to cut the wire and cut the tails off the zip ties with. 
didn't take much you don't need much could have done it with a lot of other things didn't have to use electricity to do it um, but why would you not right prep and uh, make things easier and uh, make them more comfortable man you'll uh, you'll 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 go longer I think so here's what it looks like after we scooped everything out at this point it's almost just you know potting soil and broken down wood chips for the most part I mean it's still poop it's always poop and here is where we moved the coop to and then yesterday I put up this chicken um, wire it's not chicken wire it's plastic obviously but today we'll be able to turn them out and they'll be able to live in this entire area now and then they'll just return home to um, lay eggs and roost at night that is the nest box over there by hen gear and this thing I don't know if you can see it right there that bar you put it up at night and you pull a little lever down and that box is a timer so whatever time you have it set for that bar will come down and allow them to go up there and start laying eggs and the reason you don't want that open all the time is because they will sleep in there and then they'll the box will fill up with chicken poop the mud and all the poop that we took from here we put right over here and this became the berm for the little duck water area and i've we made it a lot higher and curved it around so the water comes downhill and we've already this already works the water comes downhill it's higher here masses and it will exit over there and the water will just go that way instead of straight through here which created the whole mess to begin with so this is what it looks like about a about a week later probably um maybe half a week and the berm's pretty well dried um I need to go through and put some more material on the back i think i'm going to kind of back it up with some cinder blocks and fill it in and tamp it a little more just to kind of reinforce it over time just the water kind of coming up and the ducks messing with it it was a lot bigger you can see where they've they've built through it it's too hard to do now for them but once it rains they'll start scooping in there and eating seeds and junk out of there so that'll be a weak point right there i'll back that up and kind of tamp it with cinder blocks or sandbags or something um, and then run a little cut here so that once the water raises it just evacuates to the side a little better does that answer all that I think so.